morning y'all we got a good one today uh 500 foot line job i've done a line pumping video in quite a while so it's going to be quite interesting quite intricate intricate rather learn to pronounce that word properly um two pumps one pump pumping into the other pump the reason for that being we need a way to transport the line down to the bottom of the steep driveway uh taking it down there on a pump makes things much easier on the bodies involved um, the other reason too uh, if we split it up and pump from one pump to the next uh, we can pump the mix a little bit drier and being that this is a tidal pour for a portion of a seawall type structure uh, we don't want to pour, have to pour this stuff too wet because it needs to set up before the tide rises up on it so a few a uh, few different reasons why we're going to do it this way now i'm going to come around the corner here oh, look at this view really going to get uh, some perspective here once we're around this corner right here. Here it is. Look at this. Beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Take it all in, boys. Yeah, super, super nice up here. Anyhow, I'll be at the site in about 10 minutes and we'll do a little bit of a, uh, a walkthrough and the pump should arrive shortly thereafter and we'll get cracking we'll try and make it a good one today. So anyhow, I'll check back in a bit. And here we are. Welcome to paradise. Well, maybe not so much the setup. The uh, location is paradise. The setup is absolutely the opposite. <laughs> Roger. I think we just park illegally in the marina parking stalls. So, so what we're gonna do here, I was here to scope this one out and a buddy of mine was doing pumping the shot crate here with his line pump and he actually drove down to the bottom. And they brought the mixers down to the pump but they could only take six cubic meters at a time because of how steep this driveway is. So we've got about 40 cubic meters today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna station, so let me put my, high-end expensive coffee down here. I'm gonna station one pump at the top here. Mixer trucks will feed into it. He's gonna feed down to the second pump at the bottom. Uh, reason for that being we don't wanna have to back that many loads of concrete in and out of here. Um, I will insert right about here. Visualize the pause, 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 pause. We can even use three inch rubber hose and just tie it off to the trees for this first pour. It's about 35 to 40 meters, so that would work just fine. Right where that soft stuff is right there, right? Where the tree is right here. Oh. You start feeling how steep it is, and then this is fine, the top is fine. Oh, cause it, yeah, it's a little bit out of level too on the one side. It's, it sits away lower. Right uh, there. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. God, it must feel like those front tires are going to come off the ground. Man, this is steep. I should get out of the way. Ahead a bit. Oh. Yeah, I guess you can't really steer when you get into that spot either. That's what I mean, right here. Yeah, I definitely would not want to bring 15 trucks down here in a day. No, you're Guaranteed, like you said, one's gonna be yeah, yeah.
Okay, so seeing that, I definitely would not want to bring the trucks down here. Just wait, wait for sketchy, and that's one of their better drivers there too. So, so yeah, final answer. We pump it from the top. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so now you can see why we don't want to bring the mixers down here. Um, anyhow, we'll take a little walk here. So this is really, really steep. So what we're going to do, we're going to run all three inch line from the pump at the top feeding into the pump at the bottom here minimize any amount of kicking around of the hose and whatnot we're not pouring that fast so that three inch hose is barely going to move try and tie it off to a couple of these trees here just to secure the line so it doesn't drag itself down the hill and our second pump be sitting right at the bottom here you see how steep that is and there's that nasty corner right in the middle that's where the uh, the mixer trucks run into a little bit of trouble so we'll feed down into this guy with the three inch as i was saying and then we're going to run all two and a half inch from this little line pump here probably drop it down actually we'll run the line down the stairs here oh yeah how's the view Not too shabby, right? Yeah. Um, take a walk down below here and show you what we're actually pouring. So this is a tidal pour, as I'd mentioned earlier. And this is the lowest tide of the month. So that's why we got to get this done today while the tide is low. And then the concrete's got sufficient time to set before the, uh, the ocean comes back up on it. It's going to mount and go that way down here. So you can see the shotcrete they've been pouring. It's a buddy of mine that's been doing that with his line pump. This one today, we're replacing with our own placing crew. So we are using our pumps to do it. Okay, here we go. You can see right now, we're still partially submerged. The tide's on its way out. Concrete isn't for about two and a half hours from now. So we're going to pour this. So you can see with how thick it is and the nature of the uh, the slope is another big reason why we did not want to use one pump and pump it all the way through. Because we'd have to slump it up so much that uh, it would be difficult to place at this end without it sloughing down. And also with the, it having limited time to set before the tide comes back up on it. This way doing the two pump setup, keep it a little bit drier. So you're not pushing it all the way through the hose with one machine and the other benefit is obviously with how steep the driveway is rather than packing hoses up and down with good old-fashioned labor uh, we'll just drive the second pump right to the bottom and chuck the hoses over the edge and bang 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 so it makes what would be a really really difficult 450 to 500 foot line job into uh, quite a simple little uh, dual pump job uh, what we're gonna do when we're done clean out with compressed air we'll first blow out from the pump at the top into the hopper of the pump at the bottom probably put a little bit of retarder in the concrete before we do that such that uh, we've got some uh, some time to uh, deal with a blow procedure and then as we're blowing out into this pump's hopper we'll probably have to pump it down occasionally to keep the hopper from overfilling because it's probably gonna be more concrete in those three inch rubber hoses than the total volume of what that hopper can hold then once that first pump is blown out, we'll pump the hopper down on this guy, put the air on his two and a half inch line. We'll blow it all the way out, probably not into the pour area because we're gonna have some retarder in it. I think they just wanna get that poured in place as quick as possible. We'll probably just drag the hose over and blow it out into the ground, but we'll see what, uh, what the guys say once they get here. So anyhow, couldn't be a more beautiful spot to uh, to work that's for sure nice peaceful nice little break from doing thousand meter pours in the heart of the downtown core so anyhow i'll check back in once the uh the pumps arrive on site here okay here he comes let's see how this looks you're fine don't run over the camera man I don't know if it'll do anything. Do you have an you have an engine brake on this thing, right? Yeah, 
throw it into D1 and put the engine brake on. I don't think I it's, have it on one. yeah, I don't think it's gonna do anything anyways, but just for effect, you know. Oh, that's a Okay, we'll reconvene in 37 minutes. Okay, so he wants to impede the mailbox as little as possible, but I think it's still going to be uh, impeded, imped, obstructed, whatever. Um, I think just nose up to that flower bed and we'll try and get a nice straight shot off the hopper. The reason why I'm not just pulling the pump straight in and coming off the hopper, doing the 90 degree thing, um, I don't like doing that with that much line on it, it's all going to be pulling downhill. I find it's just so much simpler just to uh, sit 90 degrees to the pour area and run the hose straight off the sides. So that's what we're going to do here. I think I like that. We'll run a uh, another four inch elbow, kick it down, swivel it straight down the driveway. Mixer truck sits right here. Bingo, bango, piece of cake. All right, it's time to start dragging hose. I will check back in when we got this stuff buttoned up or are buttoning this stuff up. Okay, so what we're gonna do here for priming because we're priming downhill. Um, what I like to do, I know there's guys that'll put a sponge ball in the hose to keep the primer from running ahead. Um, I personally have had really bad luck with that and it could just be the mixes that we work with or maybe I'm doing something wrong because I don't know everything. Um, but what I'm gonna do or what I like to do, I just mix my bentonite. I mix it quite a bit thicker such that it doesn't run down the hose ahead of the concrete. It tends to ball up and stay in the hose there. So I'm gonna throw just a little bit, maybe like a half a bucket into this elbow here before we connect up. The other thing that we're gonna do before concrete gets here, we're gonna hook up all the hoses and we're actually gonna hook up to the two and a half inch hose that's at the other pump as well. So the full 500 feet, we're gonna put a bucket of bentonite in and a sponge and we'll put the air to it and we'll blow that through the line to pre-grease everything. Then once that's done, we'll disconnect that hose where the, uh, the pump is down below and connect it up to that pump, throw this hose into his hopper, and that's how we're gonna do the pour. But uh, yeah, half a bucket in here, blow some bentonite through the pre-grease, and we'll probably throw another full bucket into the hose here, at least a full bucket, prime that into his hopper. He'll throw a couple buckets of bentonite into the hose off the hopper of his pump, and hopefully we'll do this in one shot. Um, it would be actually quite miraculous if we did this in one pull. So uh, I'm gonna give it a 17% chance of success. So, but we'll do everything in our power to, uh, to make it happen. Something like that. Okay, so we're gonna rope our hose to the tracks of the excavator. One point here, and probably off one of those fence posts, that next clamp there. Choke it, uh, choke it at the clamp. Oh. So the stress is on the, is on the coupling, not on the rubber, so it's not squeezing it in. And even when I put it on the rubber, I like to wrap it around a few more times to distribute that load, rather than pinching all one spot. I have too, Do you? I have some more ratchet straps. Yeah, I'll take them if you got them. Okay, yeah, we should strap it from one of the fence posts to that joint right there and support some of that weight. Otherwise, once we get pouring here, it could slough itself down the hill and squeeze that hose shut with just the one, uh, the one support rope. So, Jed, can you take that rope and just wrap it around that hose over like a two foot, uh, a two foot length, just so it's not choking all in one spot because that's what'll choke the hose off. 
use your your best um, knotsmanship, your nautical capabilities. Yeah, I'm just trying to distribute that force over a larger surface area as such not to kink the hose in with the ropes. There we go. Maybe one more of those. Oh, yeah. And then wrap it. Yeah, take it under. Yes. See, why couldn't Ian have done that? I didn't rope that. No, I don't. <laughs> it was don't blame me. No, no, yeah, it was just the start. It's the way they do things in India versus the Philippines. <laughs> Different techniques. They don't have line pumps, they are the pump. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pipe down, Whitey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll tie off to the block, and we're good. See, I'll just do one more off of that joint to a fence post. Yes. And we are in good shape. Nice. One more they guy. shouldn't even move much. We're not going to pour very fast, right? So. Okay, both guys. Yeah. No, I'm looking at this because of the angle. I don't know if that's actually going to carry any load because it's like straight across. Do we have enough to just to go off, even just off the fence here? Off the I railing? Didn't trust that fence. Yeah, they said they didn't trust it. Scotty. Or can we reach the tracks? Can we go to the tracks again? We'll try. Just because there it's almost totally sideways. Right? I don't know that it's actually going to carry any load. We're just tied to Ian's mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. No. Oh, hey, I, I got no? it. I don't think so. Oh, God, damn it. You can do it. No. Yeah, no. yeah we'll figure this out. Check back in. It's our mountain goat right there. Yeah. So we're going to put a strap around that coupling there. And then we'll cinch it off to that post. The hose supported in three different spots. One, two, three. And that's what I always like to do. Attach the rope, strap, whatever you're going to use. A few feet past your point at which you're going to secure it and before you secure the rope I'll pull the hose back so there's a little bit of slack just like what we've done here so this can stretch and move a little bit and the hose will still have some slack and not be tight same thing here you got some slack in it but yeah just taking a rope and just noosing it around one small spot uh, is generally bad practice because it'll uh if you're pumping hard, once the hose starts to stretch, it'll pull itself away from the pump. It'll just uh, cinch right down on that and you'll have plug city. And then it's lots and lots of fun trying to pull that line back to regain the slack and loosen the rope off. So it's always better to do uh, a good amount of overkill as preventative measures. And you can see Ian is dusting his hopper here like a responsible operator. It doesn't like to jackhammer at day's end. You want a hot box with me? Yeah, let's do it. Blaze it up. Bent night hot box, here we go. For those who don't like jackhammering at day's end, All right, take a walk back up here. We're gonna hook up some line and then we'll blow the bent night through. Um, we blow the bent night through. Very little air pressure required. Uh, little to no concern of any sort of a uh, uncontrolled explosion at the discharge end of the hose. Uh, drastically different from when we're actually blowing the lines free of concrete. That'll be a whole different process. But uh, yeah, we're gonna connect that three inch hose up to this two and a half inch hose. We're going to use a soft three inch round sponge, which has no problem tapering down from the three inch line into the two and a half. It's soft enough, it'll squeeze up no problem. And uh, we'll just push it the whole way through. And then our lines are pre-greased, even that being said, 
we're still going to use lots of bentonite in the hose when we actually prime the concrete through. This first run here is just to basically grease up or um, grow up, I should say, any gaps in the uh, the clamps, gaskets, anything like that. That first bit of bentonite can pre-fill those so that when we actually do our real prime, uh, we're not losing any of our primer to that. It's all just going to grease the rubber ahead of the uh, ahead of the concrete. So. I probably could have explained that better and way more simple, but uh, it's early. Give me a break, right? So what we're going to do here before... Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So before we uh, connect up here, we're also going to throw a little bit of bentonite, just a little bit, into this reducer as well. Okay, let me just give it a drink. Uh, keep it thick. When it's downhill like that, I like to keep it thick, just so it doesn't run ahead of the concrete. Oh, you're gonna get my hands dirty. Perfect. That's good. Yeah, even when we go to prime the concrete, keep it just like that. Yeah. Just so it yeah, just so it doesn't flow ahead. Works for me. I've tried the sponge trick, sponge ahead of the concrete, it never works, right? I've I've never never seen it work once, but maybe we're just doing it wrong. But anyhow, we'll do it this way. And uh if it works, I'll say I told you so. If it doesn't work, I'll cry for help and say somebody make a video using the sponge so I can see how it's done. Because a lot of guys seemingly do have success with that. Uh, we just haven't. So I would be interested to see the ins and outs of exactly what the, uh, the technique is for doing so. I'm not sure why he's taking this apart right now. How come you took it apart? Okay. How come you took it apart? This is the four. No, I know, but we're going to hook the line up all together. We're going to blow it out all in one shot from the top. Oh, you want to do that right you now? You didn't get the memo. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that right now. Oh. But I, you've only got the one battery for your compressor, so I don't want to use your compressor and do it independently, or it'll probably be dead by the time the hose is full of concrete. The little battery for the uh, Milwaukee compressor only has enough juice to blow out, you know, 300 feet of line one time, which is about what we have out here. So that's why I'm doing it this way, full run from the top. Okay, so critical component here, radio communication. So we have two separate sets of radios on two separate channels. One channel from the top pump to the bottom pump, another channel from the bottom pump to the end of the, uh, or to the area of placement. Um, recommendation, don't have more than two radios on the same channel. We had a situation before where we had a line pump job with two extra guys and three channels on the go doing the blowout procedure and uh, when the sponge was nearing the end of the uh, hose um, two guys happened to get on the radio at the same time overriding each other and the signal was never uh, received to bleed the air pressure down and uh, the results were not great so anyhow my recommendation is no more than two guys per channel when doing something like this so here we go one half bucket, one full bucket, fatly mixed bentonite. What's left, Scotty? Shake the cone, shake the cone. Uh, pretty much nothing. We're all set up, ready to be good. Yep. Cool. Squeeze the cone. Oh yeah. It's like icing a cake. There we go. Break the back. Write my name and happy birthday in bed tonight. Okay, so uh, let's grease up the sponge. Always pre grease the sponge. With a little bit of bentonite. Sponge in. Grease the rubber too. We have a nice tight seal. Now we're getting dirty. And then we will put our blowout cap go. Right there. And there is an air gauge on the blowout cap. And this isn't going to exceed like 10 PSI pushing this through. So I'll uh, clamp that on. And uh, oh, Thomas has got to look at this one man show. You know, let's just rotate the cap before we cinch it down, just so the gauge is facing up. Exceptional. And then we're going to run off of the truck's air system here. 
connect up our line to the cap. This cap is a proper cap in that it has the dual bleed ports with the sponge where the air ever got past the sponge and it pushed the sponge back and blocked the, uh, the one air inlet slash outlet. It can bleed off the air through the second, uh, the second port. You always want that second port back far enough the sponge can go back and you got room to bleed the air out. So and having the air gauge there is super, super handy. Without having that, it makes it really tough to finesse it. Um, I see Muddy Feet's channel there. He does it, an awesome job without even having a, a quarter turn valve. But uh, he, he, yeah, he does a really, really good job with that. But I'm sure uh, that's years and years and years of experience. So having the, uh, the quarter turn valves and the air pressure gauge makes it uh, a lot easier for a guy that's newer to the system and to blowing out with air. So yeah, I've watched him blow out a few times. And man, does he ever finesse that thing nicely. So props to him. I think he's got to film this. And I might bump the RPM up on the pump a little bit just to uh, get a little bit more uh, volume of air from the compressor, from the truck air system. But yeah, that's barely even gonna twitch. If for some reason that air did jump up to like 40 pounds, uh, that would mean we've probably got some debris in the hose somewhere and it's plugged and we will abort and uh, adjust accordingly. But it'll probably take a while to get through if there's a lot of line on there, so. Would you ask them if there's power at the bottom of the ramp? Anyhow, I got the guys down below filming the sponge coming out of the end of the hose, so I will uh, jump to that clip next, because this is just going to be a couple minutes waiting here, and not too much going on, so. Okay. So we had a couple little air leaks in our line here. Uh, which is one of the benefits of blowing a sponge through ahead of time like this is that we discover those air leaks now versus at the end of the pour when the line is full of concrete. Granted, most of those air leaks will tend to grow up throughout the course of the pour and will not be air leaks. But uh, as you can see here, put some plastic bags over the joints and uh, we should be, should be in good shape now. So, although now this one is leaking a lot. Yeah, I think we'll still get that sponge through, but yeah, that's a leaker. Is it going? Good, okay. Watch out. Okay. <laughs> so the issue we're having is just way too many air leaks at various clamp points. Uh, that pump just doesn't produce enough air to keep up with any sort of a uh, leaky gasket to push this through all the way. So that's fine. We're just going to load up a bent night right at this point here. And conventional prime the rest of the way. Not a big deal. So, so Ian, let's just we'll hook this one back up and we'll just throw a full bucket of bent night in there too. And it is what it is. It'll still be fine. That kind of sucks, but... Yeah, our cricket superstar here, super over and underhanded the ball to his colleague, the sponge ball. Major overthrow, and now it's uh, it's landed in the ravine right there, but he's going to go get it. You got to come this way, though, buddy. <laughs> Watch out for bears. Go get your sponge. That's three bucks. <laughs> There it is. You're lucky it didn't roll all the way down to the ocean. Good job. <laughs> okay, we got our sponge back. Smile. This could be the thumbnail for the video. Hold the sponge up in a big smile. <laughs> there we go. Oh man, record view. And they're down, that was an epic fail. 
It's an epic fail. There's just way too many, uh, way too many leaks at various points. Way too many of our uh, Chineseium clamps. <laughs> they, they seriously, they, they just don't fit the same. They leak like crazy. Gaskets don't fit. So, if we had Conforms clamps here, I know we could do it. There's a Conform. Oh no, that's not. That's a that's a Conform knockoff clamp. I've said too much. Here's a Conform clamp. Yes. And this one did not leak. There you go, the proof is in the pudding. Conform clamp. Actually, the clamps from Alliance are pretty good too. So, but some of these uh, Conform knockoff clamps, like these things, the price is tempting, but uh, yeah, I don't know. The jury is still kind of out on those. You make the call. I'll go no cone on this one. I'll go no cone. Yeah. Well, only because with the cone, you don't coat that first couple feet of the hose. Okay. It's, it funnels past it, so there's our bent night, nice and thick, as we'd said. Throw this bucket in. But with the rubber on there, it almost acts like a little bit of a funnel. Beautiful. All right, we'll hook our reducer up, tilt her down, hook that up, boom, boom, boom. Good to go. All right, concrete has arrived. We are uh, slumping this up to a five inch. Uh, we have got our safety mat in place. Safety chain. In place. Safety pins in place. Secondary hopper screen in place. Nothing will get through this that would plug a three inch line or even a two and a half inch line. And for the most part, with a two inch by two inch mesh screen like that, it'll filter out the vast majority of what would plug even a two inch hose. So as long as the slump is wet enough to get through, it uh, is definitely the way to go. All right, let's have a look. I set the volume to like a stroke every five or seven seconds, so it's pretty slow, which is what we want. Oh, and I just hit the wrong button and fucked it up. Messed it up, sorry. Delete, 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 edit, edit. We'll just put the volume down to nothing. Vibrator on. Uh, it's pretty dry. What do you guys got on? Nine meters? You want to give that like 15 gallons? We will adjust the slump and we will be back shortly. So the general rule for adjusting the slump, every one gallon of water will increase the slump of one cubic meter of concrete by approximately one inch. So this here is maybe a four inch, probably closer to like a three and three quarter. So by adding 15 gallons to nine meters of concrete, which is what he's hauling here, it should bring this up to at least a five inch. If it comes in at a five and a half, even a six, that's good. I just, uh, I would rather be on the wetter side than uh, vice versa here. So we'll let them mix this up and have another crack at it. I find generally with this hopper screen, if the concrete won't go through it and it's a small rock mix, you're too dry. Five inch slump goes through this nicely. Any drier than that, it'll just stack up on the grate, so. That being said, using one of these, you do need to have a really good uh, hopper grate mounted vibrator to shake it through. If it's mounted to the body of the hopper itself, it, it ain't gonna do it, so. Here we go, let's have another look. And I'm not gonna soak this down with a hose even though it's a little bit dry. Uh, wetting it down without actually mixing it properly. Uh, it just increases the chance of the mix segregating. So I got enough bent night in there. I'm not too worried about being a little dry at the start. Perfect. Turn our auger 
motor on. follow it down, then I'll bring your remote back. I do love these remotes. They've actually got a uh, really good signal, and they're laid out very, very nicely. I like them better than the, uh, the Omnex remotes that we used to use. In my opinion, these are far superior. And most importantly, in our wet climate, they hold up to our elements much better, so... Get down to the action point here. Should be coming through any second. Wow. It's like the Blair Witch Project. Here she comes. See, because I did that bent night nice and thick, it's not uh, running way ahead of the concrete, which is what we want. You can feel it coming here. There we go. First little bit should be uh, just a good bit of bentonite slop. Well, which will actually help him on his prime too here, so. Bentonite on top of his bentonite. There we go. second. I uh, get Thomas to come down here now. We get the other operator down here. And then eventually when we get going, I'll position myself up top there and just watch the slumps on that pump and I'll have my own radio. So You didn't like the way that I had it tied to the grate, hey? No, I was going or down A. Oh boy. Only ever done it that way for 24 years. These bloody, bloody kids. These kids, they can't listen to the old guys. Huh? So these kids, they can't listen to the old guys, you know? They got all their ideas and stuff. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Just keep them full, but not too full. I don't think it's gonna run down the hill that much when you stop the pump, but uh, just anticipate a little bit of that anyhow. Otherwise, we would do something like run an air cuff down here to pinch this off when we stop. But uh, I'm not really too concerned with this. Being that it's all rubber line, there's enough resistance in the line to hold the concrete, so. Okay, now let's see. Let's look like heroes. Make it look like we know what we're doing. Heroes or rookies, what will we look like today? Or just competent pump operators, how about that? <laughs> Somewhere in between. You guys gonna put it through or you're waiting? Hey, are you gonna put it through now or are you waiting a bit? Hey, are you, are you gonna put it through now or are you waiting? Are you gonna put it through or are you guys holding for a bit? Yeah, they, they wanna extend the hose and then prime into the ramp. They do. You could, I mean, it's thick enough you could spread it in the bottom. There's a lot of bentonite in there though. I, I only got one bentonite bucket. Yeah, but the first bit out of our pump was a lot. Yeah. 
It's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot of bent night. A lot of bent night, a lot of liability. I don't think that's the greatest idea, but. Oh, they want you want to go all the way to the end? Well, they we have to start, start at the bottom. bottom yeah, yeah, okay. There's water there. Water so you got to wait. Yeah. We have to wait because we got an environmentalist here. Uh, yeah. yeah, buddy. You want to put some at the bottom and vibrate? You could pour a layer. Can you? Yeah, yeah, just, just time wise because we filled the one pump, so I don't really want to sit for an hour. That could be like an hour. What no, do you think? It's gone down Is it? dramatically in the last like 10 minutes. He's I know. Minutes, okay. Right? Um, because regardless, there's so much bent night in these lines, I wouldn't prime it right in the ramp. I would prime it and then we just got a muscle it down there. There's like a, a ton of bent night. Yeah, a lot of us here. Yeah. So we want to just like take it down, loop it back. Yeah. Prime it through and then just drag it? Yeah, okay. Pour a okay. Layer down. I'll put my camera down and we'll do that. Yeah, prime it here. Okay, so what we're going to do. We want to start pouring from the bottom and work our way up. The problem is the tide still has to go out a little bit more. And we have uh, environmental watch on site. So, I'm gonna prime out all the way at the top. Get the bent night outside the form. Work our way down and just pour a little bit in the bottom. And then start filling from the bottom and come back. So, here we go. Here we go. Please don't plug right there. That would be the worst. We put so much bent night in this line, I would be a little bit surprised if we didn't make it all the way through in one go. I can feel it. Good things are coming. Feel the weight in this hose when it actually loads up with concrete. It's going nice and slow. I can see it coming just hit the bottom of the hill there. That would be the most likely point for it to plug just because of segregation, the vertical drop. Oh, I thought I heard it grab. Yep. Come on, baby. Come on. Yeah, it sounds a little gritty. It does sound a little gritty and we got a long ways to go. I think we might be breaking this, but we'll see. Hopefully it'll reconsolidate with the bent night on the flat here. What do you think, we're gonna make it or what? Yeah, I'm a little doubtful. I think it'll plug right at the bottom where it's got to make the turn and come back up. We'll see. Think so? Yeah, it sounds okay. I think it's going to plug right there. Yeah, well actually going uphill is better than going downhill. But the damage is already done going downhill because it segregates. Maybe we'll do it here. If we make that turn and we get back uphill, I think we're in good shape. 20 bucks over under. Who wants to take the bet? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Come on, baby, we're close. We're in the last hose. That's cheating, you're not allowed to do that. Don't cheat. <laughs> Oh, you plugged it. Oh, there it is. Take like five or six strokes or more. That's still absolute junk. It's true. It's true. Take some more though. It's still, it's still crappy. That's slime. Yeah. Three buckets. Yeah, there's a lot in there. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I 
One more here. Just a little more. Hey, we're good. Yep, yeah, we're good. Okay. Yes! Okay. Best YouTube video ever! <laughs> it actually worked. It actually worked. Now we just got to worry about the uh, remaining 40 meters of concrete to pump. He's like a 130 up top. Come right up. Let's see what we got for stuff. Well, I'll have to walk across. It's not just... Yeah, you don't want it wetter than that. That's perfect, right? Oh, that's fine. Okay. Okay. I'll do a quick check in on the line. I'll be back. Be back. I don't know. It should be an hour, but they can probably speed them up once we get going. Once the tide's actually out, and the tide actually is almost out now. So, but probably an hour on the first one. Then we go 45 minutes on the preceding loads. I'm happy. That worked out well. Powdered bentonite is an amazing product. And we used about uh, $3 worth of powdered bentonite to do that, so. Anyhow, we'll check back in in a bit. Beautiful, the line's barely moving. So that little pump there, the TK60HP, is essentially a TK50 with TK70 drive cylinders. So it makes, uh, well, and more horsepower, I should say. So it makes about 1,450 PSI of pump pressure, which is quite nice for shock crate. 140-ish horsepower, a few more strokes per minute, so it's good for 60 yards an hour instead of 50. It is kind of a happy, uh, Happy medium size in between a TK50 and a TK70. I would say if I was doing mostly just floors and things like that, I would opt for a TK70, just the extra volume is nice. And less strokes per minute for the same volume of concrete means the wear parts last a little longer. We do notice that between our, our 70 and our 60 for sure. But if you're doing uh, any amount of shot crate, this thing right here is the one for sure. Perfect, line's not moving at all. Which is exactly what we were after. I know there's some guys in line that have talked about techniques as far as um, the way the hose is kicked up here when you're priming downhill and your primer can puddle ahead of that, that rise and reconsolidate itself. I think they call it like a water trap. Advanced techniques far beyond uh, my capabilities. There's some real uh, line pumping gurus out there, guys that have done this all day, every day for 20 plus years. There's a million little tricks to it. So in the grand scheme of things, what we're doing here today is actually pretty, pretty entry level amateur, but I'm happy with it regardless. Let's see how our slump looks. Pretty good. When you get down to about uh, two meters, if the next guy isn't here yet, let me know and we'll hold on to you. We do that so that we're not stranded with concrete in the lines and no concrete to push through and keep it moving. So I never, never, ever, ever empty that truck out until I know the next guy has arrived on site. So we'll hang on to them with a couple meters. We'll pump a half a meter every 10 minutes or so until the next guy actually gets here. That's like cardinal rule of line pumping or placing boom pumping. So don't ever run your truck dry. Otherwise you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable situation. 
You don't want any wetter down here, right? That's good? Perfect? That's good. I don't okay. want any wetter. Okay. Nice. Good. Not a bad view. There's a couple hours before the tide starts to come back in on this. All right, so our next truck has arrived, so we'll pump out this guy. We had uh, not even a 10 minute break, so we didn't even have to do the uh, partial pump down intervals. So we'll finish this truck out. Back the next guy on. And I think we got about three more loads coming here, so not too much else exciting gonna happen between now and then, assuming everything goes well. Uh, but I will check back in when we go to do the uh, the line blow up procedure, because that will be fairly intricate and situation critical. So it should make for some uh, decent uh, content. Anyhow. Interesting note, when we sat there for 10 minutes, this stuff tightened right up. So we'll juice up this last meter and a half. That happened quick. I think this uh, mix has gotten to its breaking point. Yeah, it is fairly warm, so. Anyhow, we will adjust and proceed. Just a pumping away. Another routine day, 500 feet of hose something like that I don't want to jinx this I shouldn't talk like that but it's going really really well thus far So great news, uh, what we have found out is that that air compressor down below there is actually uh, working and we have access to it. So I think what we're gonna do here is probably disconnect right about there and this top run of the line will blow it into the, uh, the rubble here and that bottom bit will push it back the other way rather than doing it all in one shot. The uh, critical thing with blowing out line, the more line you have, the more stored energy you have, the larger the diameter of the line, the more stored energy you have. E.g. if you're blowing out 100 feet of 2 inch line, the uh, chances of getting a massive explosion of air are significantly less than if you're blowing out 400 feet of 3 inch line. So blowing out 200 feet or 100 feet of two inch hose, if you can exit that sponge at about 15 PSI, is gonna be very non-eventful. Whereas say 300 feet of three inch line, 15 PSI coming out the end of that hose, with all that volume behind it, is gonna be a, uh, a lot more wild. So the more hose and the larger diameter the hose is, the more critical it is to exit that sponge at as low of an air pressure as possible which is why what we'll do sometimes, push the sponge, stop at about two to three hoses from the end, break it off, connect the air up, and those last two or three hoses, will push them out independently on their own so you're not trying to expel all that stored energy in a uh, controlled, non-violent, and safe manner. So, super, super critical when you're blowing out with air to uh, have a procedure and really know what you're doing. Because man, oh man, I've seen it go bad a couple of times, and until you've seen it, uh, it's tough to really uh, grasp the uh, the actual uh, potential for catastrophe if you don't do things correctly. Now see this? I don't like stuff like that. That's how you wreck a hose. So we're gonna stop. We're gonna tighten this up and fix this because that'll, uh, that'll burn right through a $500 hose in no time. I always walk the line and look for stuff like that. So we're gonna stop. Hey Ian, go. Hold up for a sec. Okay, so we made an adjustment. Moved the rope around, pulled this up a bit. I'm not super excited about how I only have one rung of rope around the hose there, but it's just assisting the lower rope. So we're pretty good. Let's see how this works. I 
I can live with that. You can see on the bottom side there, it was starting to wear through the hose, so. It's like the biggest avoidable wear and tear cost line pumping. It's just making sure that the hoses are not rubbing through on things. Because man, oh man, when you're out doing a job for a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks, and your profit margin is about 20% of that, and you burn through a $500 hose, do the math. Now you're working for free. So, and we don't like to work for free. At least I don't. And reach down, we throw them in the bucket. Ah, uh, too bad. So yes, we have a metal hose on the end here, but we're pouring about uh, 20 yards an hour. So I'm not, uh, with this little line pump, creating a massive air pocket is really next to impossible. So I'm not super concerned about this. If we were pouring 60 yards an hour, totally different story. I personally may have run the line down the stairs and come the long way, but uh, this is how the kids wanted to do it, so. They're a lot more agile than I am, so uh, different challenges, right? It's working. So one of the big benefits, like I said, of using the two pumps here is we can pour this stuff a lot drier. The, uh, the boys are on a steep section of the ramp and they want it nice and tight. So we're down to about a four inch slump at best. And we are pumping it, no problemo. If we were doing this all with just the one pump and all 500 feet of line, there's no way we would, we would be pushing it this dry. It probably would get the concrete there, but the hose would be jumping all over the place. Or we'd have to run a bunch of steel slick line, which we could do. Um, but this is just easier and more efficient to be honest. So it's all good. That's the main pressure gauge on the left. As you can see, it's right around 1100. And this pump starts to get cranky right around uh, about 3500-ish. It gets a little unhappy. So at 1100, we are just cruising along with this thing. Tick, tick, tick. Perfect. You just left? Yeah, we're definitely gonna delay it then. We'll just pump this down. You can vibe your shootout if you want. So our next truck is about 40 minutes away. This guy's got three meters left. So we're gonna put a bag of delay set in the drum, slump it up, pump about a meter through, get that meter into our lines, into our system, and then we're gonna sit and wait with some nice delayed concrete in the lines, and we'll do about a half a meter every 10, 15 minutes until the next truck arrives. So the driver has the bag of delay set product. He's gonna toss it in the drum. tear it open and throw it in and those are a uh, dissolving bag I do like this product because you can retard the concrete without killing it this is the, uh, the Fritz Pat brand I really like this stuff I find with some of the other products like Delvo and whatnot there's always a risk of getting a little too aggressive with it and completely killing the concrete. Whereas, with, oh, we've got a situation over here. <laughs> um, with the delay set stuff, it's a little bit more controlled. So the only thing I will say is if the concrete is really hot, 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 you can't bring it back with this stuff like you can with the elbow to an extent. So, okay, we'll take about a meter. Thomas, let's pump about a meter through. So we'll pump about a meter of this slumped up delay set concrete. 
through the pump, through the lines, into the other pump, through his lines, and then we'll hang tight and we'll just do our uh, half a meter every 15 minute kind of intervals till the next guy arrives. What's going on? Every uh, concrete job is complete with. So, so you got a cigarette and a bottle of hot sauce. I drink this and I smoke it with this. That's just, I'll you. that's just weird. <laughs> You've never done that? Are you serious? Just a little dab on the tip of the... No, you don't, really? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I thought maybe, maybe it was like hash oil or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> hey, Jim, I just went up to get keys, I swear. It's a problem when you get to be in your mid-40s, I believe pretty much anything. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know what the kids are up to. <laughs> yeah. Man, the slump didn't come up much. Um, want to give her another blast? Yeah. Yeah, please. Okay, round two on the slump. Let's see what we got. You want to be on the channel? No. Nope. Yep. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. It's a ready mix technician right there, right? We don't just deliver the concrete, we slump it to perfection as well. That's exactly what we're after. Perfect. Oh, I like what you're doing. You're, you're going to calculate the volume in the line and try and blow it in there. Cool. I like where you're going with that, but, 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 I think we have... Because they're environmentalists right there. Well, we've got so much room to blow the hoses out on the ground. Um, I think we're going to prioritize just retarding the concrete and making this easy versus getting every last ounce into the pour area. That yeah. being said, I, I want to renege on the on your deviation in the plan. I do want to just blow it into your hopper. I'll pump it right down. I'll put some sugar in the last bit, so it's sugared up concrete going into you, and then you pump it down, pump the sugared up concrete through your line, and then we'll put your little Milwaukee compressor onto the two and a half. And what are you going to have? Like 200 feet by that point, right? We'll just push it through the Milwaukee. Nice wet sugared up concrete, and they can just put it in the dirt. Yeah, like I'm, I'm only going to blow out three hoses, if anything. I already brought down the blower cap to them. Oh, he, oh, he is going to do the rest going the other way. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, fine too then. Right okay, okay, well, we'll do it that way then. Yeah, that works too. Yeah, there's no need to be heroes and get every last ounce into the poor area today. Nope. Even though we've done it before. Simple mathematical equation, how much hose, the diameter of the hose, and figure out how much concrete is contained in the hose, and calculate how much you need in the poor area, and... A little of this, little of that, and magic. No more than a wheelbarrow left over. 50% of the time, we get it right. Sometimes. Commented on my channel. Oh my the, the guy about pulling the pump up the driveway. What happens is it happens just with you in that one. The James, uh, yeah, and the hopper's too high. The hopper's too high, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah he, uh, he, would, he was up there, and even with the, the chute flipped up, oh, yeah. like it, it's just, it's, yeah. No, you, that was pretty close. Cool See, I was right, right? right? Yeah, I was yeah. right. Yeah. Well, I was, was I was right. I was right. Your comment was that uh, it, it still didn't reach, and it probably did. You're right. Yeah. But it was. Uh, it was a. Bit of a yeah. The hill. Was, yeah. But... So we did it the better way, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, you heard it right there. <laughs> Witness. My biggest supporter, right there. Right there. Okay. So what we're gonna do here? We are actually gonna blow the line out into the pour area because we're gonna go to another job and we want to preserve as much concrete as possible. Um. So yeah. We're gonna leave enough in this pump, just enough to cycle. And the rest of it, we're gonna blow it into the pour area. So, we'll check back in the bed here. Lay this, like so. And then we'll take about uh, two strokes. So we'll pump it down. And then we're gonna blow out from the second hose. As such, we have enough concrete in the first hose in the hopper to recirculate this and rock this pump dirty to the next job. And all the lines here, we're gonna blow it into the pour area. Now this will be a bit challenging because I didn't get to wet it up or retard the concrete the way that I wanted to. So uh, this will be a little bit more uh, intricate than what we planned on, but we're gonna make this work. So before we do anything else, we'll cycle this around about 20 strokes to mix in that delay set. And then we know that this pump is nice and dead-ish and then we can tend to our lines here. Yeah, let's give her 10 
strokes and it's good. And I'm gonna grab the blow cap here. Come down to our line, which we are gonna blow out into the other pump down below. So I'll hook this up and then we'll go. Sponge and cap on, away we go. That's not going to work that way very well. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go down below. Um, don't run it up more than like 30 PSI. Yeah. And when it gets like two hoses from the end, we'll radio you and then drop it down to like, like 10 to 15. Yeah. Stuff I'm fitting. Okay, I'll go down again. Okay, just gonna blow this out into the pump at the bottom once we find the operator. Okay, buddy, put your lid down. You can, uh, as it's going in there, do you wanna pump it and spray it with water too? He's gonna blow that line out into you now. So just put the lid down on top of it and just, just soak it with water as it's going in. You're blowing out right now? Into you, yeah. Yeah. Is that gonna be enough? He says eight wheelbarrows and you got your hopper fullish? No. I don't know, he, it's, that's what he wants to do because he wants to have enough for the next one. So oh. we'll find out. Okay, lid down. There's definitely eight wheelbarrows in this, uh, in this full system, so. You do have a full hopper too? Okay, we'll pump it right down or just start pumping it as we're blowing out into you. If you pop air, it's not a big deal. And I would recommend wetting it up with your hoses that goes in there too. Because the stuff in the lines is a little bit on the hot side, so. Okay, let Thomas know to hit the air. You let your buddy know to put the air on whenever you're ready. Let Thomas know to put the air on. Just remind him no more than 30 pounds. And when we get two hoses from the end, I'm gonna tell them to drop it down to like 10. You got your water hose? I'll spray this up too. Yeah, turns off, they are. Yeah, yeah, okay. We'll just wet it up at the end and push it through then. That's fine. As soon as he gets two hoses from the end here, we're going to cut this back to about 10 PSI and just gently push that sponge out the end into the hopper. some good movement here
Eh, slowly but surely. A little bit more slowly than surely at this point. There we go, we're empty there. Hey Ian! Ian! Hey! Cut it, cut it down to about 25. Yeah, to, to about 25. About 25 pounds. That slowed it right down, which is what we wanted. Perfect. There we go. We are now into our last two hoses. Almost into our last two hoses. Right at the joint here, passing through. Passing through, passing through. No need to be in a hurry with this stuff. Being in a rush is where it gets dangerous. Okay, tell them to start bleeding it down to about 15. There we go. Okay, about 10, take it to 10. 10. Okay, tell them to make sure it's a 10, no more than 10. Here it comes. It's almost there. Almost there. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Not bad. We've done a little better, but that wasn't too bad. Anyhow, now we are going to hook up Ian's little compressor to this line and we'll blow this out. So we'll put some delay set in this hopper, pump that into the lines first before we get onto that. So. All right, so they only need about a wheelbarrow full of concrete, which is what's in the hoses here. So we're going to delay set the hopper on the second pump. We'll heavily delay it. Heavy, heavy delay. Nice. And now we will pump this hopper down, pump this stuff into the hoses. Probably what's in this hopper and just pushing a bit of air with the pump will be enough to finish off the pour area. And then we got nice retarded concrete in the lines and we will blow these lines out separately. So, okay, lid down. Let's wind her up and give them what they need. Okay, no swearing, we're rolling. Lid down, wind her up, pump her out, boom, boom, boom. We should be able to push enough to get them what they need. So yeah, we pump that hopper down. We should get a good amount of that uh, delayed concrete into the hoses. Not all the way through, but a good way through. And then uh, I think we'll just use this little Milwaukee compressor and blow this line out from up top here, right down, all the way out. I think makes the most sense in this case. So I'll check back in once we're uh, at that point. Okay, time being of the essence, little Milwaukee compressor. We're gonna blow out 50 feet of this hose. We're gonna break that apart down there. The rest of the line that's in the pit, we're gonna blow it with their compressor there, so. so just cause now we're all of a sudden trying to get to the next job, so. All right, splash it up at like 20. I don't think anybody even needs to be down there. Oh, your gauge doesn't work? That sucks. I'm a little bit 
concerned that it's maybe not. Is it it's 70 pounds? Yeah, forget that. We'll just take it apart and shake it out. It's probably segregation plug. Who cares? I'll take it apart down there. We're just blowing out this runnel line. As you can see, this stuff's starting to set like crazy. The uh, change in game plan here really uh, kind of put a hitch in my plan for blowing these lines out in a calm manner. Now it's kind of like go, go, go time, so. What's it add for pressure? Okay. Give me like 15 pounds. Is it a 20? Okay. Just leave it there then. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I just keep it at 20. Here it comes. Weed it down. Yeah. Okay. A little bit. Well, that made it more interesting. Something blow up? No, no, no. It's just stuff hot as hot as heck now. So it's okay. He should be very shortly. Yes. Did you give the other driver the address? No. I haven't yet. Once I get the lines out, I'll run up there and get them blown out. I should say. Good. Beauty. We'll drain these last couple hoses by hand and bang, bang, bang. Here we go. Okay, as you can see, lines are clean. A little issues we're pumping the wet stuff through. What's that? Oh, there's still some. Okay. Yeah, I'll hit it in a second here. But a little bit of a segregation plug, so you drain these two by hand. As you can see, this stuff is not waiting around for anybody, so got that cleaned out just in time. You want me to reconnect? No, it's all empty. I'll just give it a quick rinse. It's fine. It's, it's all good now. Here we go. 250 of Isuzu's wildest ponies at work here. <laughs> Better get a run at it, buddy. I don't have to pull all the hose off to get it up the hill. <laughs> yeah, this thing is pretty limited for power, so. Yeah. I'll hook the ridge line up to it. Throw it in four low. Oh wait, no, I don't have four low. We got the diesel. Oh, you do? Okay. You don't think the ridge line could do it? I don't know. <laughs> it'd be funny. I think it would probably explode. That'd be a video in itself, really. All right, here we go, fingers crossed. This is steep. And like I said, that pump has no power. It could benefit from about 3,000 pounds of weight reduction. You go fast, I can run fast, it's okay. Let me get ahead of him here. Like I said, at this part here that concerns me. Come on, baby. Oh. Keep that momentum going. It's the bouncing that could really get us here. Just like that. We made it. Beautiful. 
the, the clamps I promised you will be up here, they're not up here. Oh, nice. I think if it were raining and wet out, you wouldn't have a hope in heck of getting up there, to be honest. But, yeah. Okay. Good job, mate. We'll talk to you later. Ah, the tranquility after that little bit of semi-chaos. So here we are. Yeah, about four and a half, five hours later, the tides come up. And this concrete has cured. Hot, hot, hot. A gorgeous day out. All in all, that went really, really well on the pouring part of things. Um, on the blowout there at the end, the uh, audible that was called that uh, we should save as much concrete as possible and uh, take it to another little gig and make use of it. Um, kind of through hitching our plans. The plan was the pump sugared up concrete all the way through both pumps and have an easy non-eventful blowdown. And then that was uh, Ixnade, so we uh, we dealt with the hot mud in the lines. <laughs> we got it out, we got it done. Biggest problem was when we put a little bit of water in the hopper, the second pump there, and uh, went to pump it through, it actually segregated on us, so we had to break it apart, blow down in two separate little uh, segments there and then drain some hose by, by hand. No big deal, but this stuff had, uh, the concrete had definitely expired. Anyhow, pretty good day all in all. We do a lot of little, little pours like this, so it's always nice to have a bit of a challenge. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and once again, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. <sighs> like, share, subscribe. Over and out.